Chased by Sea Monsters is a three-part mini-series about prehistoric animals that swam the oceans for millions of years. Our host Nigel Marvin takes us on a big adventure and he dives into the sea monster's turf. Nigel visits what he thinks is the seven most deadly seas ever. He starts off with the least dangerous to the most dangerous. The timeline isn't in order this time, which is a nice change. The show starts off with an action montage of dinosaurs chasing Nigel. The animals that are hunting Nigel down is the same ones from Chased by Dinosaurs. The music is tense and the action brief sequences are genuinely roarsome. Nigel makes a jump for it in the ocean, only to think fast that this was a bad idea. Nigel has a long piece of paper that shows a timeline of prehistory. We get a 3D vision of the timeline, which is a cool gimmick when doing scene transitions for each time period we enter in. They have creatures in the 3D version and on paper to quickly identify the time period. Nigel goes back in time to visit the dangerous seas, but he also briefly touches on aspects on the outside of the waters, such as the animals that live ashore and in the sky. As a kid, I always loved the little side moments. It's those little moments of land animals near the oceans that gives the ecosystem life, therefore more believable. Speaking of ecosystems, Niger not only comes back to visit the seas, he also goes back in time to explore other life during those time periods. He communicates to the audience to tell us why certain environments are the way they are now. They're going back to see the sea monsters, but that will be a strict and closed motivated excuse to go back. Fortunately, the show is more open and isn't afraid to touch on the second and non revelant details briefly. Just look around and you can see why the atmosphere is so different. There's no life at all on the land. There's no insects in the air. There's not even worms in the ground. And most crucially of all, there's no plants. There's not a speck of green. So the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, it's not being absorbed by them. And they're not boosting the atmosphere with oxygen. But it's a different story out there in the sea. Throughout the series, Nigel dives into his round cage to get up close with the sea monsters. I like this as it's a way to interact with the sea animals. But Nigel mostly dives into the waters to swim with the sea monsters. He gets up close and interacts with the animals way better this way. He goes inside his cage during the Donkleosius and Megalodon encounters. When those moments come into play, the animals smash the cages because of Nigel taunting them with something they want. Nigel sometimes does his little experiments to reveal the sheer power of these carnivorous sea animals, such as the Megalodon test, by having a fake sea mammal pretending to be its prey. It reveals the damage that the giant shark can deliver. He also uses a dummy with chemicals to test out what the baby Lyprodons likes or dislikes when they come to feast, then to use it as a defense with the adults in the nighttime scene. It is realistic and logical to have protection when facing these savage animals. My favourite moment from the series is the fourth deadly sea. The sequence where the Basilosaurus arrives at the crew's boat to nudge it. Nigel dives in and uses the boat as a shield. The sea is empty looking and the depth feels dark and endless. It's very creepy for me in a positive manner. What makes the sequence even more terrifying is the snake-like whale arriving to Nigel's side. It's been introduced with suspenseful drum music. Too close. They haven't got as big a brain as the modern whales, they're not such so- As a kid, it panicked me a little and it still does. We're always in Nigel's perspective and not the Basilosaurus's, which makes the scene terrifying, personally. The number one deadly sea is not a joke. 
The show tells you exactly what makes this sea so nasty. There's always a feeding frenzy, with mists of blood in the waters. All kinds of species play in this pool of death to eat each other. This alone turns Niger off from diving into the waters. Niger does not feel the animals in general, but this is quite surprising that he refuses to dive in the sea. I can't dive in that sea. It's because there's not just one predator here, there's a whole suite of them. It's so jam-packed with killers. There's various sharks, giant fishes, and sea reptiles to concern about. This section of the show exceeds the fear factor very clear. And you can see, look, it has been bitten in two. It proves that we're in giant Mosasaur country. Nothing else could have done damage like that. Sea Monsters is an overall a fun and adventurous ride. It's straightforward and informative. I never knew about these sea monsters and my introduction to these prehistoric animals in the past wasn't that exciting. That's until I watched this show. I learned a lot and it makes me interested in them even more. I still watch this show to this date and because it's well executed and thrilling to watch. I highly recommend this if you want to learn about sea monsters and to be entertained at the same time. With a funny name, it's called an Arsinoetherium. An Ars 